Hey, I'm Caleb with You Can Make This Too. Thank you for joining me today. I'm building this air cleaner tool cart combination thing for a friend of mine. The design's a little different than what you normally see with air cleaners, and I'll talk about that at the end. I'm gonna have plans available for these. They'll be on pre-order at a discount until I have them released. So if you're interested in that, there'll be a link below. Now let me show you how you can make this too. My buddy Andrew at Memphis Woodshop, I'll have a link to his Instagram below, wanted an air cleaner, so he's held on to this blower motor for a few years. No judgment, Andrew. We all do it. So, being a good friend, or at least a friend that needs to make good content, I picked up his blower and some scrap wood he's been holding on to for an undisclosed amount of time, and got to work. He also wanted to get his planer off the floor. So, the goal here is to put some scrap wood to use, get his shop air cleaner, and get his planer up to the same level as his new workbench I'm also building for him, and some other tools. I started by cutting the plywood down to the same length. This is going to be a really simple build. It's basically just an open-ended box with some bracing material inside. After I get everything cut down, I drill in some pocket holes to hold the whole thing together. It's a bit of a trick to hold sheet goods of any size in place while trying to pocket screw them together. So I recently made this right angle fence thing to aid in that process. It's basically a giant clamping square. So I clamp my pieces to it and then screw them together. I didn't completely think the next step through though and was way over committed to using this guide. The looking back, there's at least three better ways to arrange the material, but I picked the one that puts the most strain on the pocket screws and the clamps. Fortunately, nothing broke while I got this together though. Last was attaching the top, so I clamped my jig to my assembly table and go to town. Having the fence on the assembly table gives me something to push against, so I can keep the edge of the top flush with the side panel while I screw it together. And a side note on building pieces like this, I always want to see a continuous piece on the top, so the top sits on top of any side pieces. I also like a continuous piece down the side, so I set the bottom piece between the sides instead of the sides on top of the bottom. Hope that makes sense. The heart of this contraption is the blower, and it needs somewhere to exhaust, so I mark out the right size hole and then drill and jigsaw it out. Of course, I realize that jigsawing down is really hard, so I add some more holes so I can cut up instead, and that goes a lot better. Now if you're paying attention, you'll realize that I did all of this with the box upside down. So, I take off the side piece, fix the pocket holes off camera, and then reinstall it the right way. But, if I was an even smarter man, I would have just cut the hole out before I assembled everything together in the first place, so yeah. But once I get it flipped around, I add a little cover piece at the bottom, and nothing's the worse for wear. Then it's time to add the blower motor. It has holes all around the exhaust port, so I whip together a frame that I can secure to the main box and then screw the blower motor to it so it's nice and snug and won't go anywhere. Next up, I traced where my switch box would go, traced out the hole, and cut it out with my jigsaw again. Nothing special here. And for the filter stops, this is just scrap three-quarter inch plywood that I had laying around, so I glue it and then brad nail it into place. I'm a firm believer that stuff like this should be mobile, which means casters. Now casters can actually get pretty pricey, so one of the things I like to do is pick up the cheap dollies from Harbor Freight when they're on sale, and then just take the casters off when I need them. It's actually cheaper than buying a set of casters. The last construction is adding stops and tabs to hold the filters in place from the outside. The tabs are actually some cut up paint sticks that I sanded down to a curve just to look a little nicer. And the only trick is making sure that the hole in the tab is slightly larger than the diameter of the screw so that way it'll swing freely around the screw. I give everything a coat of poly to make it look a bit nicer and give it some protection. Uh, and I really like the veneer on this top piece. This will probably annoy some people, but I'm not covering the details of how I wired this because I just followed the wiring diagram on the motor to set it to slow speed and the instructions that came with my switch outlet combination so that the outlet is always live for the planer to be plugged into and that the switch only controls the blower. That's not so both the planer and 
air cleaner can be run at the same time, that'd probably be too much load. It just saves on how many cords get pulled around. I added a cover to the exhaust to keep debris and whatnot out of the blower motor and also to deflect the air up so it doesn't stir dust on the ground. Last, I installed the filters and was finally able to give it a try and it was surprisingly quieter than I expected. Then it was time to take it to Andrew's shop. Big design differences you'll notice is most of the air cleaners I've seen pull air in one side and out the other. But the way a blower motor works is they kind of try to pull air in a T shape where air comes in two sides and then out another way perpendicular. So I set up the cart to work with the way the blower wants to pull air and push air to hopefully minimize the amount of turbulence and resistance inside of the unit. One of the considerations with that that was probably hard to see is I made sure there were several inches of standoff distance between the blower itself and the first filter. And that's just to try to prevent the blower from concentrating on just a small part of the filter and let the air disperse a little bit and pull more evenly through the filter. The other big difference is the filter setup. Now any filter you put in a wood shop and run air through is gonna look dirty really quick, but most filters aren't actually gonna catch the stuff in the air that's really dangerous to you that's super small. So you need a filter that can catch that stuff. However, the more stuff a filter catches, the more air resistance it provides. So that's why the heart of this filter are those big five inch filters you saw me put in first that are MERV 13 rated. With them being such a deeper filter, they have a lot more filter material available. So my hope was with that increase in material, that would not impede the airflow enough to restrict the motor. Now my filters, my pre-filters outside of that were only one inch, but they were a lower rating, so they won't provide as much resistance. I was hoping for the middle filter to be a MERV 8 for that balance between stopping particles before they get to the really expensive MERV 13 filter, but not impeding airflow, but I couldn't get that locally, so it's a MERV 11, which is a little higher, so adds a little more resistance, but it seems to be pulling air and blowing just fine, and the motor isn't straining at all. And then the outside filter is a MERV 5, which is basically a throwaway. They only cost a few dollars, and most of the air passes through. The entire concept is just layering it so that way the most expensive filter lasts as long as possible, so you can replace less expensive filters or vacuum them off to extend the life just to save on how long it takes before those $25 filters inside have to be replaced. But anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and, and following along. I hope you learned something or at least entertained. If you want to help support the channel, there's links below that help you do that. Until next time, make time to make something.